Hello everyone. Here is a buffer problem of, uh, so of which is multi-part, and we're going to address this problem one by one. So before we actually address the problem, I want to read the problem for you and then get started on how to solve the problem. So the problem states a buffer is made by adding 0.2 moles of acetic acid and 0.3 moles of sodium acetate CH3COONA to enough water to make one liter buffer solution, okay? And then the GAA for acetic acid is given to be 1.76 times 10 to the negative five. And given this piece of information, they're asking you three questions. First thing is what is the pH of the buffer solution? The second question is what is the pH of the buffer solution after five ml of four molar NaOH solution is added? And then in part C, for comparison with part B, calculate the pH of a solution made by adding five milliliters of four molar NaOH solution to one liter of pure water. Okay, so these are three parts to the problem. We're gonna do it one by one and in each part, I'm gonna give you some explanation so that you understand each part pretty well. Okay, so the first part, we, as in any problem solving, we have to first write down what is given. The As you read the problem, it is pretty clear that the there are certain things that are, certain things become very clear. One is the concentration of acetic acid is given. And I want you to be very careful because when you read the problem, here it says we're using 0.2 moles of acetic acid. But then until you get to the end of the sentence, that's where you see that they're saying this 0.2 moles of acetic acid is actually dissolved in one liter solution. So therefore, the concentration of acetic acid is going to be 0 0.200 moles per one liter. So that's what we're writing here for the units. And that indicates the concentration of the weak acid. And we know that acetic acid is a weak acid. The next piece of information comes in the form of Ka. And the Ka of acetic acid is given to be 1.76 times 10 to the negative five. And then same way, the moles for sodium acetate is given over here. And the moles of sodium acetate is given to be 0.3 moles per liter and that we know is our conjugate base. So these are things that we can decipher just from reading the problem. So you know, whenever you sit down to solve a problem, at least first thing you do is write down what is given. And then we're gonna address just the part, you know, the, the questions that are asked after. So it's asking three questions, right? It's asking you to find the pH of the buffer and then pH of the buffer after the addition of the sodium hydroxide base. And then what happens if you added the same amount of base to water, how much what is what will be the pH of that water solution? Okay, so that's what they're asking you. So we're gonna go through one by one and then try to answer them. So first part, we're going to decide what our strategy is gonna be in solving this problem. In the first part, uh, part A, they're asking you to figure out the pH of the buffer solution. And we know that anytime we are solving problems with the buffer, one of the key equations that we need to pay attention to is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is pH equals pKa plus log of conjugate base concentration over weak acid concentration, okay? And based on our reading, we already know that in the problem, we are given the Ka value, which we can convert into pKa. So once we convert that into pKa, we can take this pKa value and then plug it into our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation right over here. And then we also know the concentration of conjugate base and weak acid. We can pretty easily solve, at least for part A, the, how to figure out the pH of the buffer solution. The second part, we are where above, uh, five milliliters of four molar NaOH is being added to the buffer. And then we're going to figure out the pH of the solution after the addition of NaOH. So even in this case, we're going to end up using the henderson hasselbalch equation. We just need to figure out what these numbers are. What is the concentration of the salt what is the concentration of weak acid after the sodium hydroxide has been added to it? Once, if we can figure that out, then we will be able to figure out the pH of the buffer solution. So for part A and part B, we will be using the henderson hasselbalch equation. Whereas in part C, if you see here, they're saying that we are adding five molar, five milliliters of four molar NaOH. They're adding it to pure water solution. So because we're adding it to water solution, water is not a very good, is not an effective buffer we can't use the henderson hasselbalch equation. We have to go through a slightly different pathway for answering that question. And I will discuss it when we get there 
and we'll go through that process in part C. Okay, so this is our general strategy. So we're going to start with part A, which is calculate the pH of this buffer solution. So when you want to calculate the pH of this buffer solution, as I mentioned, we are going to use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. And I also kind of briefly went over the strategy that is, we're going to figure out our pKa first. And once we figure out the pKa, we're going to plug it in right here. Once we plug it in here, then all these other two numbers that we need are already given in the problem. We're just, just going to put in those numbers and complete the calculation. So how does the calculation work? So as I mentioned, so here's pKa. If you want to convert k to pKa, we substitute the value of k into this equation, take the negative log of that number. And if you do the calculation, it will come out to be 4.75. And we take this 4.75, and then we're going to plug it into the henderson hasselbalch equation, which is right here. And then we're going to look for these other two values that were already given in the problem and then put it in here to get to the final answer. So let us go through the steps here. So this is our henderson hasselbalch equation right here. We've already plugged in our pKa value for the first part. And then the moles of the conjugate base, which is sodium acetate, was given to be 0.3 in one liter. So the molarity is 0.3 molar. And in the bottom, the, the molarity was 0.2 molar. You plug in those numbers. And we know that 0.3 over 0.2, if you put in your calculator, that will come out to be 1.5. And if you take the log of that number, it will come out to be 0.176. And then if you add that to the pKa value, which is 4.75, you will end up with the final pH of the buffer to be 4.93. So this is going to be the answer to part A, the pH of the buffer by itself, uh, just containing the conjugate base and the weak acid, it pH, its pH is 4.93. Okay, so that's what is going on here. So now we're going to move on to part B because we're going to do something to the buffer that we have made in part A. So for this part, we have to, again, we're going to use the henderson hasselbalch equation but it's not right away. So we'll have to do some manipulation before we get to the henderson hasselbalch equation because <coughs> we're still using the buffer and we're gonna continue to use the henderson hasselbalch equation even for this part, okay? So let's see how we go about doing this. So what we're going to do now is to try to kind of understand how this calculation is set up, okay? So just to give you a visual of what's going on. So in this part, imagine that you have a beaker and in this beaker, we already have the buffer and then we did some calculations in part A, and then we figured out that the pH of the buffer in part A was 4.93. Now, we're going to add to this buffer, we have another bottle sitting here, and that bottle contains four molar NaOH, and this is a strong base. And from this bottle, we're going to take five milliliters of that sodium hydroxide and put it into this beaker here, mix it up, and then we'll have to figure out what the pH is for that particular, for that buffer after the addition of NaOH. Okay, so this is the this is the status. And before we even start doing any calculation, we have to have some intuition about what we expect to happen. First thing is we are adding a strong base, NaOH, which is given here. We're going to add this into our buffer solution. So anytime you're going to add a base, the ba base is going to try to shift the pH to a higher value. Why? Because a addition of a base is going to make the solution more basic. When we say more basic, if you remember our pH scale, if you go towards higher values of pH, that is what implies, that's what, that, then we say that the solution is shifting to a more basic pH. So that means we think we, we, we have a starting pH of 4.93 for the buffer. After the NaOH is added, then we expect the pH to be shifting to a higher value. And one more thing to keep in mind here is that this, the amount of pH increase, that is, our starting pH is 4.93. It's going to go, is the, it's va the value is going to shift greater than 4.93. By how much that value is going to shift depends on how many, how many milliliters of NaOH we're adding in here. Because we're adding five milliliters, that how much ever, how many ever particles of NaOH are present in that five milliliters is going to dictate how much the pH is going to shift. So if you want to figure out how many particles of NaOH are being added, into the buffer solution, we need to figure out the moles of NaOH. And we know that mole is basically a way of counting the number of particles. So mole is a collection of particles. So we're actually counting how many particles of NH NaOH are being added into this mixture. Because we are starting our concentration, starting concentration of NaOH is four moles per one liter. That is in one liter, it is assumed that we'll have four moles of NaOH. 
And since we are not adding all the one liter into the beaker, we're adding only five milliliters into the beaker, we multiply the concentration, which is four moles over liter, four moles over one liter, multiplied by 0 0.005 liters. Because we changed our volume, which was given as five milliliters, we converted that into liters so that when we set up this equation, this unit here, the liters and the liters will cancel out, and then you will enter, end up with your units in moles, and it will be the moles of NaOH that is being added to the solution, okay? So now what we are figuring out here is, before starting to do any calculation, we are figuring out how many moles of NaOH are being added into this buffer solution, so that later we are gonna use this information to figure out how this equilibrium is gonna shift, how the, the pH is gonna shift towards higher value. This is gonna help us figure that out in the next step, okay? So let's let's move on to the next stage of the calculation. So we are we know, that we're adding this NaOH uh, into the buffer solution. The buffer already contains two things. If you know, it contains the conjugate base and it also contains the weak acid. And we're gonna add the sodium hydroxide into the solution. When we're gonna add it, the pH is gonna become greater than 4.93. We don't know what the exact number is. That's what we're trying to figure out in, in this calculation. <clears throat> and in order to cause this increase, we are actually adding 0 0.02 moles of NaOH. This is what we figured out in the calculation. This is the 0 0.02 moles. By the addition of the 0 0.02 moles, the pH is gonna to shift to a higher value. So there are certain things that we need to understand about what is gonna happen in this, in, this, in this process of adding a base to a buffer. So first thing that's gonna happen, <clears throat> as I mentioned before, is that addition of the strong base will shift the pH to a higher value, okay? So that we already know. So I'm just putting it here so that you have it on the record. And then when the base is added to the buffer, so it has a choice. When the NaOH is being added from this bottle into this beaker, it has, it has a choice. That is, because the, in the buffer, we contain two things. We have a weak acid. This is our weak acid. And this is this guy, sodium acetate is our conjugate base over here. When we add the base sodium hydroxide, it has a choice. It has a choice of either reacting with the weak acid or it has a choice of reacting with the conjugate base. And if you remember, that any base that if you add it in with any other compound, its natural tendency is that it's going to react only with the acid. It's a base is not going to react with another base. A base usually reacts with another acid. So the reason why I've highlighted this NaOH here and then the conjugate base over here is because whenever you're going to add a base to a mixture uh, containing a weak acid and a conjugate base, the base is not going to react with this conjugate base, it is going to react with the weak acid. So that's the reason why I've circled it here. And the statement here literally summarizes what I just told you. When a base is added to the buffer, it will neutralize the weak acid. That means it is going to react with the weak acid. The converse statement, let's say this, this same problem was set up slightly differently and they said, instead of adding a four molar NaOH, they added a different compound, an acid like hydrochloric acid, then the corresponding statement that you will make is that when an acid is added to the buffer, it will neutralize the corresponding conjugate base. So if this was an acid, it's gonna react with the sodium acetate because you're adding sodium hydroxide, it is going to react with the, uh, react with the uh, acetic acid that's present in the solution. And understanding this mentally, very important. It's like paying attention to this and then making note of it and then making a mental note of this is going to help you because in the next step, this is this conclusion that we have written down, this particular conclusion that we have written down is going to help us set up a reaction and an equation and it's going to help us account for what is going on as the sodium hydroxide is reacting with your buffer. Okay, so let's see what happens in the, in the next slide. So we have the same setup, nothing has changed here. So we have our bottle of NaOH, we are adding it to the buffer. So what is the chemical reaction that is happening when we set up, uh, when, when the NaOH is added to the buffer? The chemical reaction that is happening is that, as I mentioned, this is our base, this is the base, this is the strong base, NaOH, this is the strong base. The strong base, when it's added into the buffer, it's not going to react with the salt, it is only going to react with the weak acid. So this is our weak acid. So I'm writing the equation, the chemical equation, in such a way that you have your acetic acid, which is the weak acid, it's reacting with NaOH, and it's producing sodium acetate, which is the conjugate base, and water. So this is water, so we have our water. So this is the chemical equation. Now I'm going to 
set the I stable. I, I, I'm pretty sure you've heard of this initial change equilibrium thing in your general chemistry. So we're actually going to set up the I stable because we're going to break this problem into three parts as to what happens when you added the NaOH right before it reacts, what happens when the NaOH actually reacts, and what is left at the very end. So that's what we're trying to figure out here. So the first thing that we're going to do is write down what we are starting with. So before, when you start the reaction, you have some initial amount. So that's why it's called initial. We know that before this NaOH reacts with the acidic acid, we have 0.2 moles because this is what was given in the problem. And we also know that we have 0.3 moles of sodium acetate that was already given in the problem. Now to this mixture, we have added the 0.02 moles of NaOH. This was added after the buffer was made. Okay, so now we have this. Now, this is a hypothetical state where everything is in solution, but we are thinking that nothing has happened. We're, this is just a hypothetical state. This doesn't really happen in the solution. As soon as you add, things are going to react. But for the sake of accounting, for the sake of keeping track of how things are reacting, we really have to create this initial state, which is a hypothetical state. Okay. Now we're going to allow these chemicals to react. And when you react, the when you allow the chemicals to react, some change happens. Now the question is, what change happens? So here, if you look at it, you have your weak acid and you have 0.2 moles of it. And then you have 0.2 moles of NaOH. And if you compare the moles of those two compounds, you can see that the NaOH moles are much, much lower than the moles of, moles of your acidic acid. So that's telling you that when your acidic acid is going to react with the strong base, your limiting reagent is going to be this NaOH. This is going to be the limiting reagent. What, what do we mean by limiting reagent? Limiting reagent is the reagent that is going to run out first. Why? Because you have excess of something and you have less amount of the other thing. When they react one to one, then you're going to end up using up all of that base. So, and also I want you to pay attention to the stoichiometry of the reaction. There's no numbers there. So I'm putting ones here to indicate that for every one mole of acetic acid, you're going to react with one mole of NaOH and you're going to end up producing one mole of sodium acetate and one mole of water. So because of that reason, if we end up consuming all of those 0 0.02 moles of NaOH, then it is going to end up reacting with only 0 0.02 moles of acetic acid. And then it's going to end up producing 0 0.02 moles of sodium acetate. And I want you to pay careful attention to the signs in front of the numbers. The sign right in front of this number is a negative sign because it tells you that 0 0.02 moles are reacting. So that means it's getting consumed. So therefore, the amount of acetic acid in the reaction is going to decrease. Whereas on the product side, if you see here, there is a positive number. The positive sign tells you that you're actually producing sodium acetate. Okay. So you're producing plus 0 0.02, 0 0.02 moles of sodium acetate. Now, the change has occurred. Now we want to check how much, how much, uh, are, how much thing, how, how many things are left behind at the end of the reaction. So that is indicated by this equilibrium thing. Equilibrium usually means that what is left at the end of the chemical reaction. So we just add up the two numbers. 0 0.02 minus 0 0.08 is going to give us 0.18 moles for acetic acid. We have consumed all of the NaOH, so we don't have to worry about that. Now look at the, the sodium acetate here. We started with 0.3 moles. Now we have additionally made 0.02 moles. So therefore we have produced an Point, we have in solution 0.32 moles of the conjugate base. So now because of the addition of this NaOH to your buffer, what we have ended up doing is that we have reduced the moles of, we've reduced the moles of this um, acetic acid, but we have increased slightly the moles of your moles of your conjugate base. So now, because now we have new moles for conjugate base and new moles of uh, new moles for the weak acid, we have to recalculate the pH using the henderson hasselbalch equation. So we're going to do that in this, in this step. So again, to summarize, so we did we did what is called the ice table, I, I for the initial, C for the change, and E for equilibrium. This sort of analysis is called the ice table. We did the ice table analysis for our uh, addition of NaOH to our buffer. And then we found out what are the new values of the acidic acid moles. In the beginning, we started with 0.2 moles of acidic acid, but in the end, we have only 0.18 left. In, for the conjugate base, we started with 0.3 moles before the NaOH was added. 
But after the NaOH was added, we see that the moles of Na is this uh, sodium acetate has increased. So we have now new moles for the conjugate base. So this is our conjugate base, and then this is our weak acid. And we're going to plug it back into the Henderson Hasselbalch equation to figure out what is the new pH. Okay. So here's our Henderson Hasselbalch equation given here. And then you can see that we've already figured out in part A, our pKa is 4.75. Nothing has changed because we're still working with acetic acid. And then in the equation, now I'm plugging in the new moles. The new moles are 0.32 moles, which come, came from there. I'm plugging in there. And then this 0.18 moles is what we're plugging in over here. And then we calculate the ratio 0.32 over 0.18 is 1.77. And then you calculate the log of that. The log of that is going to come out to be 0.25. And 0.25 plus 4.75 is going to give you a final value of 5. So what we are learning is that when you added the 5 milliliters of 4 molar NaOH to your buffer, your pH changed from 4.93. So when you started, when the buffer was by itself, the pH was 4.93. Now, after the NaOH was added, after the NaOH was added, the pH shifted to 5.00. So that means your pH actually shifted by 0.07 units. So by 0.07 units, the pH has shifted as a result of adding this NaOH. Okay, so this is the conclusion that we are learning from part B. Now that we're done with part B of this problem, we're going to start working on part C of this problem. In the part C of this problem, as you can see in the highlighted part, it says that we are trying to figure out what is the pH of a solution in which we're adding 5 milliliters of 4 molar NaOH, which is the same amount that we use in part B, but except in this case, we're going to add it to 1 liter of pure water. Okay, so let's try to create a visual for this. The visual looks something like this. So we are starting with one liter of water, 1.0 liters of water, and this water is pure. So to start with, the pH of water is gonna be around seven, okay? Because neutral, water is neutral, and we know that the pH of water is gonna be seven. To this one liter of water, we're gonna add this same five milliliters of four molar NaOH, and that is gonna contain 0 0.2 moles of NaOH. So we're gonna take it from this bottle, and then we're going to transfer it to the beaker. Okay, so that's what we're doing. As we are doing this, we need to understand certain things uh, in this part C because it's slightly different from how we address things in part A and part B. So let's go through some key points that are important when we are thinking about part C. So in part C, what's happening is we're adding the base to water. So when we add the base to water, just like what happened with the buffer, the pH is going to shift to a higher value. So that means the pH value is going to change from 7 to some value greater than 7, some value greater than 7.0. So we have to figure out what that value is, and that's going to be the goal for this problem. So that's point number one. The second point is when we add the NaOH to the water, water cannot serve as an effective buffer. So water is not a buffer. So we're not going to, as a result of that, we're not going to use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation because typically Henderson Hasselbalch equation for figuring out the pH, we use it only when we are dealing with buffers. In this case, since water is not a buffer, is not an effective buffer, we're not going to use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. Instead, what we want to do is we want to figure out what is actually going on when we add the NaOH to the water. So you want to think about this addition of NaOH to water like so let's say that you wanted to do laundry and then you went to uh, get to get your detergent from say uh, from a detergent bottle and you will take a lid of that and then you'll pour it into a bucket of water and then mix it up because when you mix it up you're going to have a dilute soap solution and then you're going to soak your clothes in it and then you can actually do wash your clothes in that soapy solution uh, so same way in this case what we are trying to do is we are trying to add this five milliliters of NaOH into one liter. One liter is, so this is five milliliters, and we know that one liter is 1,000 milliliters. So we're adding a very small amount of NaOH into a very large amount of water. So because water is, you know, your, your NaOH is not doing any reacting with the water, it's just going to dissolve. And it, when it dissolves, it's going to end up producing a dilute solution of NaOH, okay? And in this problem, what they're asking you to do is find the pH of the solution. 
after that NaOH is added to the water. So what is the goal in this problem? The goal in this problem is to figure out the pH of this diluted NaOH solution. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. So how do we go about doing this is what we're gonna see next. So we have the same picture. And if you, in general, if you want to figure out the pH of any solution, we know that if you wanna calculate the pH, pH is given by negative log of hydronium ion concentration. So if you knew the hydronium ion concentration, then you can very easily figure out the pH. But we have a problem. The problem is that we are working with NaOH. NaOH is a base, it's not an acid. So just from just knowing the concentration of NaOH will not directly give you the hydronium ion concentration. Therefore, we can determine the pH using this equation directly. So we can't use that. So we have to take a slightly different approach to this. So what we are going to do is we are going to figure out the concentration of the NaOH solution, that is the molarity of it. From the molarity of NaOH solution, we're going to figure out the concentration of hydroxide. Okay, because why, why, why can we do this? We know that NaOH is a strong base. So anytime you put NaOH in solution, NaOH is going to split up into, is going to split up into Na plus ion, one Na plus ion, and one OH minus ion. So whatever is the concentration of NaOH is going to be also the concentration of hydroxide ion because they are related one to one in terms of stoichiometry. So as a result, if you know the concentration of NaOH, we can figure out the concentration of hydroxide. So what do we do with the concentration of hydroxide? If you know the concentration of hydroxide, we can figure out the POH because we know that if you want to figure out the POH, we went over this in one of the earlier videos, POH is given by negative log of hydroxide ion concentration. So if you knew the hydroxide ion concentration, we can figure out the POH. And once we figure out the POH, we can figure out the pH because we know this starting equation that pH plus POH is gonna be equal to 14. So if you know the value of POH and if you wanna solve for pH, then pH is gonna be 14 minus POH and then we can get the pH from there. So this is the strategy that we are going to use to get to the final pH of the solution, okay? So let's go ahead and try that and then try to get the concentration of uh, the pH of the solution, this NaOH solution, okay? So let's start with our first step. So we, what, we are, what we are trying to get here is the concentration of NaOH. Anytime we want to get the concentration of NaOH, what we mean by that is molarity of NaOH. And you know that the definition of molarity is moles of solute divided by the liters of solution. In, the, in this case, the solute is NaOH. So here, moles of solute divided by the liters of the solution. So how do we figure, what numbers do we put in there? We already know that the moles of NaOH, we calculated it in part B, that was 0 0.02. So we're gonna plug in the 0 0.02 right here. And then the liters of solution is gonna be the one liter that was there in this beaker. We, we had one liter of water in this beaker. Now we are adding a five milliliter into that. So when you add up the two volumes, you will get 1.005 liters. So we're going to divide the moles by the liters, and then that's going to give us the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. Now, once we know the concentration of sodium hydroxide, we know that that is same as the concentration of the hydroxide ion, because for the reasons I stated earlier, sodium hydroxide dissociated into one sodium ion and one hydroxide ion. Therefore, every NaOH is going to contain one hydroxide that's the reason why the concentration of NaOH is same as the concentration of hydroxide ion. So once we know the concentration of hydroxide, we're gonna do the POH calculation and POH calculation is negative log of hydroxide ion concentration. We are plugging in the 0 0.0019 from this previous step. We're putting it in here. And then that gives us a POH value of 1.7. And now we have to get the pH. And we said that if you wanna figure out the pH, it's 14 minus POH. So 14 minus 1.7 is going to give us 12.3. So what this is saying is when you start, before you added the NaOH to the water, the pH was seven. And after you added the NaOH to the buffer, the pH changed to 12.30. So that means it's moved this much. So the change in going from seven to 12.30 is a difference of 5.30 pH units. So the pH changed by five units 5.3 units as a result of adding your water, uh, NaOH to the water, okay? So that's what is happening here. So let's take a st take stock of all the three parts of the problem and then try to conclude something, some key ideas from this problem. So the key ideas, the key conclusions here are, in part A, we had just the buffer 
and then the pH of that buffer was 4.93. And then we took the buffer and then we added that five milliliters of four molar NaOH to it. And when we did that, the pH shifted to five for the buffer. And this gives us a difference of 0 0.07, okay? So whenever you add the base to the buffer, the pH changes only by 0 0.07 unit. But if you added the same amount of NaOH to the water, the pH went to 12, okay? The pH, the value was 12.3. And we know that the water by itself, its beginning pH is seven. From seven, it went to 12.3. So as a result, it's changed by 5.3 units. So the key message by working out this problem, what you are learning from this is that when you have water and you add base to it, because water is not a buffer, your pH is going to pH change that happens as a result of the NaOH addition is going to be much, much larger, which is 5.3 units compared to if you have a buffer and you add an NaOH, the pH change is only 0.07 units. And if you remember in one of the earlier videos, we talked about the fact that the job of a buffer is to make sure that it resists the change in pH. It wants to keep that pH change minimal. So when you have a buffer and if you add a base to it or acid to it, the pH change is going to be very minimal. It's not going to shift a whole lot as long as you're within that buffering range. But if you are going to add an acid or base to something that is not buffered or just pure water, the pH is going to change a whole lot. So this is the reason why in many, many chemical reactions that we do, we always do them under buffered conditions because we want to make sure that the pH doesn't change drastically due to some reason during the reaction. We want to keep it at a steady level. And that's the reason why this problem is important because it conveys this important aspect that your buffer does a pretty good job of resisting changes in pH.